surfers talk a really good game about wanting to protect the environment, but the decisions that we make with our purchases don't map to that. And I had this idea that we could do it better and we could show the industry how we could use recycled materials, reclaim materials and trash to change the impact we were having on the environment. This is all trash with the most exotic pieces of wood that you can find, but we're taking the time and effort to go look for it, to save it and to try to repurpose it. We're having fun going out and doing something we love and to to do that and rob from something else at the same time wouldn't feel as good as if you're trying to put everything that you can into it to make it better and more sustainable for everyone involved. The cheapest guitar could write a song and uh, you could change the world, but the guitar making itself is the way to get the message out. And, and the message is what me and Mark Tyner are doing to make the world a better place. Really, we're all the same. We're all using the environment. We're all trying to take care of this environment because it gives us so much for enjoyment. We want to take care of it and we want to you know, continue for the future to take care of it for, for writers and all generations to come. Please welcome David Dennis and Martine Stipp out of Ventana Surfboards and Supplies. We are so excited to be here to share our story with you. I'm David Dennis. I'm Martin Stippout. And we're the co-founders of Ventana Surfboards and Supplies out of Santa Cruz, California, right over that way. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our name comes from the love of the Ventana wilderness just down the coast a little ways in Big Sur. So a little background on myself. David likes to call me trashy. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. I was born in South Africa, moved through Europe for a number of years, and learned at a very young age that trash isn't always trash. There's a lot more use that can be had out of products that have been discarded. Um, I went through Europe, as I said, and when I ended up in the United States, I ended up studying marine biology at the Monterey University and did that. After that, I um, was employed on a sailboat doing research and conservation education here in Monterey Bay. During my time doing that, I discovered how much trash is out in the oceans and how much is really discarded, how many usable materials are still out there. So I really made it a focus to kind of see what I could do about it personally, and that's how the idea of Ventana came about. So Martine and I first, wait, where am I? <laughs> Martine and I first met when I was photographing surfboard shapers to raise money for the Santa Cruz Surfrider Foundation. His artisanship inspired me to write a business plan to create the most environmentally responsible surf company in the world. So we joined forces, I think it's 10 years ago this week actually. Uh, and I now drive sales, marketing, business development while juggling a day job at Microsoft. And thankfully they let me work remotely so I have time for both. I was extraordinarily fired up to hear about Microsoft Copilot and the licenses that you have. Many of you may know we've invested over $10 billion in open AI. The stuff that we're working on internally is absolutely incredible and you're gonna get all kinds of value from it. And we're gonna show you in a second how we as a SERP company are even using AI a little bit. So before I met David, I was just a guy in a barn whittling a surfboard here and there, not really having a grand vision of everything. Um, once David and I partnered together, I kind of call him my first version of AI. He really helped me embrace technology and what it can do for me. Even though everything I do is still handcrafted with hand tools, I am starting to use much more technology, and he is pretty integral in using AI for our business plan itself. I don't let David touch the tools. He still has all of his fingers. He doesn't let me touch the computer, so it's a really good partner. <laughs> so one of the reasons we created Ventana is because what I said in that intro, surfers talk a really good game about wanting to protect the oceans, but our purchase behavior is at odds with that. The apparel industry has a very negative impact on the environment. Most surfboards are made from styrofoam and toxic resins. They break often. They're basically disposable. And then wetsuits, very cold out here. We always have to wear a wetsuit. Uh, they're made from petroleum usually, and they wear out after a season or two, especially if you're surfing a lot. So we wanted to take a different approach. We have the highest bars for artisanship and environmental responsibility. 
We know that high quality products last longer, which is better for the consumer and better for the planet. But we also use mostly trash to create our products. That reduces our cost pretty significantly. It increases profit and it gives our products deep and unique meaning that resonates with our customers and is vastly superior to mass produced commodity goods. And you're gonna see that in a moment with what we created for you as gifts here at Camp Buck. We also donate at least 5% of our profits to ocean conservation organizations. And two years ago, we started a university scholarship called the Ventana Ocean Conservation Scholarship. We just awarded $4,000 to a, a local student uh, last week. We give that out every year. So at the core of our business are these hollow frame surfboards that you see there. Um, we use offcuts and all kinds of trash from different businesses. But once AI, Mr. David, joined me, um, we expanded and started an apparel line. We started working with local artists and working with small businesses to each bring each other up through ways of marketing. Um, we use offcuts from all kinds of businesses and not just wood itself. Produce small things, pens, bottle openers, bookmarks, even a small portable guitar amp that you can use. So quite thrifty. Yeah, we're using, uh, we're using AI a lot. And if Martin, I think, knows a lot of the ways, I have to leave right after this, but I think he's gonna stick around so you can ask him some of the questions. But one of our new t-shirts, take a look at the otter. Photoshop edited by me, human intelligence, but that otter is AI generated. We generally do all of our art with local artists, some around the world, but we're starting to test the waters with using AI and a little bit of human intelligence on top of it um, to create products. So here are just a few of the um, partners that we have. I think we have about 35 now in what we call the Ventana Upcycle Partner Program. So most of these businesses represent donated wood, but we use neoprene in some of our products. We use nylon tent material. We use uh, leather, paracord, electronics, a whole bunch more. All of it is someone else's trash, but it's our treasure. So we have a really healthy social media base. Ventana Surfboards, follow us everywhere and anywhere. Uh, tag us if you're taking pictures. Um, and we've done a good deal of TV and podcasts and radio. And we always promote our partners in all of those contexts more than we even talk about ourselves. The materials are being reused by us, but the partners get marketing value for what would otherwise go to the landfill. So I'll mention some of our favorite partners. This is one of our oldest partnerships with Santa Cruz Guitar Company. Um, Richard Hoover started this business in 1976 and has been building some of the most incredible instruments out there. People the likes of Eric Clapton, um, John Fogarty, Brad Paisley, they all play as instruments. Um, as you can see in this barrel, there are Honduras mahogany offcuts. Richard realized real quickly that all of their waste products can be somebody else's treasure. So we've been working with him. I go every once in a while when I have the time and the space and collect all their waste. They're using the most incredible exotic wood species in the world. And for me, I like using even the smallest bits. So all these things get to have a new life to themselves. We're gonna be creating a new surfboard and guitar combination with them, hopefully for their 20,000th guitar this year. So it's really exciting to have access to all these materials that are coveted all around the world People usually don't even have access to purchase them and I get to use them as trash for free and give them another life rather than sending them to the burn pit or into the landfills. So the wooden hang tags on the bookmarks that you, many of you are gonna be getting, we have two gifts that we've created. Some will get one and some will get the other. These wooden hang tags that say Camp Buck on them were actually created from Honduran mahogany guitar neck offcuts from the Santa Cruz Guitar Company, what you see in that barrel there. And every single piece of wood that you see here was donated. We're a wooden surfboard and wooden product company, but we have a rule that we won't buy wood. The cost of our goods is extremely low. Every piece of wood has an incredibly rich and deep story. As an example, that Garibaldi, which is actually the California state fish, they're right out here. Uh, that's made, I think, from, what's this wood? Flame maple. That's flame maple. Flame maple, yeah. I'm getting good at identifying are. the woods. Yeah. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not allowed to touch the wood, touch the tools, so. Uh, that's flame maple from guitar face offcuts, probably from a guitar face that didn't quite go right, and they just gave it to us. And Martine turned that into a Garibaldi fish with abalone inlay for the eye. 
and ebony inlay for the eye. All of that is offcut from Santa Cruz Guitar Company acoustic guitar production. By the way, those are really smooth and fast in the water. They're all art pieces, but they're all built to surf. And they, where's Nick? I don't think Nick's ever surfed one of our boards. I think he's backstage. We're going to have to get him on one of those. So take a look at these mugs on this slide are made locally by a small business called Cords Mugs. And they're wrapped in paracord. The offcuts, which we think are pretty, are also really great for surfers to save their surf session. Because if you break one of these, you can't put your leash on your surfboard. So these paracord offcuts from the production of those are used on all of our products, all the hang tags that we use for our apparel as an example. And you can use them in a pinch to attach your leash to your surfboard. And I think it's a little hard to see with the plants, but the bottom of each of these is a little loop out of metal or resin that you can connect this paracord to to connect your leash to your surfboard. And the gifts that we're giving you today also have a piece of paracord, again, trash left over that would have otherwise gone to the landfill from this company uh, that's over in Santa Cruz. So beyond Richard Hoover at Santa Cruz Guitar Company, probably one of my favorite partnerships is with the Western Flyer Foundation. The Western Flyer is a 77-foot trawler that was built in Washington in 1937. Doc Ricketts and John Steinbeck chartered this boat through the Sea of Cortez in 1940. While he was aboard, he wrote the log of the Sea of Cortez. The boat had a long history. It sank three times at the dock due to neglect. Long story short, the current owner decided it was much too valuable to let it go to waste. So he decided he was going to rebuild the boat. Spent millions and millions of dollars and several years rebuilding it at the original shop that built it. David happened to be in a meeting with him and said, hey, do you think we could have some of your scrap wood? And he said, absolutely. So we got a bunch of his trash, the old hull planks of the actual Western Flyer. Now we've been able to use that for the products like the little gifts that you guys get. So like most of the things we do, it's not just an interesting piece of wood. There's a whole story behind it. And that's really what's been able to create the personal connections between our products and our customers. Yeah, so this is the boat. In 19, it was built in 1937. So this is sometime between 1937 and 1940. That's the new version of the boat that was just rebuilt. It's now a state-of-the-art research vessel for kids to learn about ocean conservation that's docked right here in Moss Landing. The lightning bolt in this board, I think the kelp as well, the kelp leaves, um, this one over here with the tree, our logo, those are all hull planks from the Western Flyer, the original boat. Bookmark is made from the hull of the Western Flyer. Bottle opener, wood from the Western Flyer. Really, really rich history. It's inspired countless people, marine biologists, ocean conservations, and us uh, to do what we do. So each of you is either going to get a bookmark or a bottle opener. If you want, Take a sniff. It's Douglas fir. It looks like some other type of wood, but that's because this was against the engine room in the original boat. And so it smells a little bit like oil and diesel fuel because that's literally where it came from. So there's John Steinbeck. I would, had no idea we were going to be in the Steinbeck room, so that was really cool when we came here and saw that. Uh, our local hero, Nobel Prize winner. This is the log from the Sea of Cortez. You can get it at most bookstores around here. You can get it online. That's the Western Flyer that's on the cover. And this whole book is about the adventure. And you're going to take a little bit of it with you today as a piece of history. So one of the local artists we work with is Andrea Dungledin. She is pictured here in the original boat as it's being rebuilt up in Fort Townsend, Washington. She was also uh, responsible for curating the posters for Camp Buck this year. So it's a really nice local connection to have bringing all Steinbeck our business, and a local artist together here. So this is some breaking news related to that sea lion that's in that poster and the t-shirt that you've got here to, uh, at Camp Buck. I saw this online two days ago. just popped up on my news feed. This is actually international news. This is from a UK paper. Uh, that this, There's a stunning beach is urgently shut down due to surprise invasion. That's literally right over here. Uh, the sea lions have just taken over. I didn't tell David. I invited them. <laughs> So it's do not put one of these on the sea lions. They get to be 100, 800 pounds, and they're nine feet long, and they can be really vicious. So we were, you did invite them, but we weren't going to put a lanyard on them because, uh, again, I still have all my fingers. Um, so our scale is very small. So it's very easy for us to create most of our products from reused and recycled materials. Obviously, at the scale of Freeman, 
much more challenging. But we were really impressed that a corporation of your size is concerned with their environmental footprint. Where's Lauren Tanner? Hi, Lauren. I had a great discussion with Lauren about your end of show program. She told me about the work of the green team across the local offices. So where's Denver? Anyone here from Denver? So dog toys made from t-shirts left over from an event. Um, I know, where's the, anyone from the Orlando team? Cool. Uh, neck pillows and cooler bags made from upcycled fabric from events. And then I know both Denver and Orlando also have the Plexi Take Back program where uh, plexiglass is returned to polymer shapes for reuse. And then I know uh, you've also worked with Rareform before where you take vinyl signs from events and repurpose those into bags. We've worked with them as well, so we're really happy to hear that you're working with this great company too. So feel free to hit us up via email, follow us on social media. Um, we'd love to turn some of your trash into products because we know you have a lot of really cool waste. When we look at it, it's treasure. We definitely want to give a special thanks to Sherry and Nick, wherever he may be in the back, for allowing us to come speak with you, share what we do, share what might be possible with trash in your future, and, and really inspire you to think about what happens with the products you use and the products you might discard. So thank you. I'm going to thank be you. <laughs>